Do you ever notice how every new health trend promises you superpowers? Focus like Einstein, energy like a Navy SEAL, sleep like a Zen monk floating through outer space? Well, today I'm gonna to break down four trendy biohacks that you should absolutely never try. Not necessarily because they don't do anything, but more because the risks, the side effects, and the marketing hype are way bigger than people want to admit. And the last one's gained a ton of traction lately, but influencers are doing it wrong. And frankly, it could be very dangerous to you if you try it. Today, I wanna to cover these four biohacks you should never try and give you alternatives that will really work without all the risks or side effects. Stick around. First up is using nicotine as a focus tool because apparently in 2025, we decided the best way to be productive is to pretend we're smokers without lighting up a cigarette. There's gums, there's pouches, there's lozenges. Every productivity hacker out there is saying it works. But take it from me, if you have never been addicted to nicotine, it's not a habit you wanna pick up. Here's what nicotine really does. Nicotine activates receptors in your body which can temporarily lead to alertness, focus, and reaction time. So it can help you dial in. But it also spikes dopamine in a way that leads to addiction fast. You get dependent on it super quick. And it's not dependency like a coffee addiction or staring at your screen all day. These are physical withdrawal symptoms. So nobody's mentioned the fact that it's highly addictive, it can raise your blood pressure super fast. It creates a cycle where you use it, you crave it, you use it again, you crave it. You repeat that over and over and over. If you've never seen anybody that smokes, it'll make your hands shake and you just have to have it. And it's a hard thing to break. It's also gonna worsen your anxiety because stimulants always do. It also destroys your dopamine sensitivity, which means you're gonna need more and more over time. It stays in your system for quite a while, so it's also gonna interfere with your sleep cycle. And you may even have to get up in the middle of the night because you're wanting that nicotine so bad. And I'm telling you, the withdrawal from it is like burnout, brain fog, irritability. You have these physical symptoms where you just wanna have it and you get angry. I mean, people feel like it's helping their productivity and it does for a minute, but then you're gonna pay for it for the rest of your day, if not the rest of your life. Instead, what you need to do is prioritize sleep. Most people don't get nearly enough sleep and that alone is gonna help you focus. Most people don't have focus issues, they're exhausted. I did a whole series about sleep and I'll link it up there and down in the description if that's your problem. You can try caffeine and L-theanine in the morning instead. Or you can try my yerba mate drink that I make. That helps you be super focused. And it's smooth and it's clean. Some people have a problem with coffee. This one's a little different energy if you're not a fan of coffee. Also make sure your blood sugar's stabilized. So if your blood sugar's up and down, that's gonna feel exactly like ADHD. You're not gonna be able to focus. And that may be why you're reaching for nicotine or another stimulant like that. Also make sure your electrolytes are right. Low magnesium is a huge cause of brain fog and where you think you need some focus. If your magnesium levels are not right, you're gonna have low energy. You're gonna have poor stress control and you're gonna have irritability. All the same things that nicotine will do to you when you're trying to withdraw. Now, why do you hear this next one? This is a multi-million dollar industry now. I see ads for this stuff all the time. I actually got one to try it out so I can tell you firsthand, you don't wanna spend your money on this. This whole idea and industry is built on words that you can't even define. What I'm talking about here is scalar energy devices and energy healing. You may see them in devices like this. You may see them called frequency harmonizers, quantum resonance, or other terms that sound really interesting. They promise to balance your cells and align your vibrational frequencies. But whenever you hear things like this, here's your rule of thumb. If the benefits sound like they were written by a poet on psychedelics, be very suspicious. I tried to dig into the research on these things and really, there's not a lot of it. They claim to improve your energy, repair DNA, protect from EMFs, boost mitochondrial function, restore biofields, harmonize frequency, and even improve vitality. I mean, are we trying to fix our health here or summon alien technology? Here's the actual science behind this. Scalar waves do exist, but in physics, not in biology. They're a theoretical electromagnetic wave. There is absolutely zero peer-reviewed research that shows that it can affect human cells, improve mitochondrial function, alter physiology, boost energy, alter DNA, or anything like that. There are zero large human trials outside of the ones probably paid for by these companies. These devices are basically big, expensive amulets you can hang around your neck with zero benefit. I would challenge you to go look one of these up and see what kind of things they promise. And then use a little common sense and tell me how you think it would work. Look, I'm all about trying new things. This is not one you wanna waste your money on. In addition to the wasting money part of it, the big risk is not that they harm you, it's that they distract you. 
People use them to avoid real lifestyle changes that will help. They'll say, well, I don't need sleep. My frequency's aligned. I don't need sunlight. My halo balances my photons. I don't need electrolytes. My energy field is structured. Come on, y'all. That's not healing. That's play and pretend. Do this instead. Get some morning sunlight. That's going to reset your circadian rhythm and mitochondria absolutely love that. Try red light therapy. There's some real clinical data behind that. Keep your minerals balanced, your sodium, your potassium, your magnesium. Talk about that a lot. Get some movement. That's your real bioelectric stimulation. And make sure you're hydrated and real hydration. I am going to make a video coming up real soon about that. But look, stuff like this is silly. But this next one could be absolutely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Methylene blue has become the latest TikTok potion. Take a few drops, your tongue turns blue, and all of a sudden your mitochondria are supposed to be healed. Here's what most people forget. Methylene blue is a medication. It's a legit clinical prescription compound. There's a lot of real medical uses for it. It's used in certain psychiatric research. It's used for lab staining. It has some antifungal uses. You can use it in an aquarium for parasites. And it's got some antiseptic application. But do you hear what I didn't say? Fixing your energy, boosting your mitochondria, doubling your focus, supercharging your brain. Here's the danger. It's an MAOI. That means mixing it with SSRI medications, 5-HTP, St. John's wort, ADHD medications, mood medications, and a host of other medications can cause serotonin syndrome, which can be fatal. Look, a small amount may improve mitochondrial electron flow, but a slightly larger amount is literally toxic. And purity online is a joke. Remember, I own a supplement company. This is an unregulated industry. Half of the methylene blue influencers are literally drinking fish tank cleaner. And higher doses can literally oxidize your cells, the opposite of what you're wanting to happen. So unless you like gambling with your mitochondria, maybe skip the blue Kool-Aid. There are much better alternatives, and these actually have clinical data behind them. Creatine massively improves mitochondrial energy and ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, which is a source of energy. Red light therapy supports these things. Exercise is the most powerful mitochondria builder ever developed. And sunlight exposure is like no other thing for your mitochondria. So leave the methylene blue alone, but the final biohack is one that gets a lot of people into trouble, even to the point where you may be able to only do it one time. This last biohack is cold plunges. People talk about this everywhere. There is some good research behind this. Cold exposure can improve mental resilience, reduce inflammation, boost brown fat activation, and support metabolic health. But here's where things go sideways. This is something that cold plunge influencers forget to mention. And honestly, this is important enough to have its own video, but I'm going to include it here. Cold plunges can trigger something called a cold shock response. A cold shock response is your heart basically saying, buddy, I wasn't ready for this. When your body hits the freezing cold water, your system fires off a massive adrenaline surge. Your blood vessels clamp down really, really hard, something called vasoconstriction. You have a really sharp spike in blood pressure. You have a sudden drop in heart rhythm stability. For most people, this is just uncomfortable, really uncomfortable. But for the wrong person or the wrong situation, it can trigger sudden cardiac arrest. So you don't know if you're one of these people. Cold shock can cause arrhythmias, especially in people with undiagnosed heart conditions. It can also cause it in people with mineral deficiencies, high cortisol, or high blood pressure. The cold water basically forces blood from the extremities into the core to try to keep you warm. So the workload of your heart skyrockets. Your heart works off of electricity, and the electrical rhythm of the heart can misfire under stress like that. And you don't necessarily even need a heart condition for that to happen. There's a ton of documented cases of people collapsing as soon as they hit the water. Cardiac arrest happening after 10 to 20 seconds. Even trained athletes can have arrhythmias from cold exposure. And there are numerous fatalities from water temperatures under 60 degrees, even if people aren't fully immersed in the water. Check it out for yourself. Do your research. And look, if you're under a lot of stress, you don't need more stress. And that's exactly what cold plunges do. If you want to try some cold therapy, if you do the sauna, and I've made a video about that too, I'll link it up there and down in the description. And saunas, by the way, have tremendous benefits. After you're done with that or after you're done exercising, just get in a cold shower. The temperature in there is not going to be cold enough to affect you the way these cold plunges do. And just breathe steady. One to three minutes of that after you're really hot from exercise or sauna is really beneficial. So look, the whole biohacking culture has convinced us that we need some gadgets for all these things. But the truth is you need support. You need consistency. You need balance. You need nature. And of course, there are some things that really work, and there's evidence to prove it. There's either not enough evidence to suggest these, or they are downright dangerous. Eat real foods. Get your minerals right. Get sunlight. 
Sleep like your life depends on it, because it does. Move your body. Manage the stress you already have before you add more stress to your body. If you like videos like this, make sure you hit the like button on the way out and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, if you want to see more content like this. Let me know which biohacks you think are way overhyped for future videos. I try to keep up with all the new things that come out and see if there's any evidence to support them. So stay healthy, don't fall for the overhyped biohacks, and I'll see you in the next video.